Welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. Oregon is smack dab in the middle of March Madness. The NCAA Women's Regional Finals are being held this weekend at the Moda Center. The event is hosted by Oregon State University, the Oregon Sports Authority, the Rose Quarter, and Travel Portland. It has been years in the planning, and there are big dreams ahead. Here to tell us more, welcome to my guest, the Executive Director and CEO of the Oregon Sports Authority, Jim Etzel. Jim, it's great to have you on Straight Talk, your first time here. Yeah, thanks, Laurel. Excited to be here. Well, wow, this is so exciting to have March Madness at the Moda Center. How big of a deal is this? It's a big deal. It's been three years in the making since the bid was submitted uh, by, by the group of four that you just talked about. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's just been a tremendous, uh, since we brought NCAA basketball championships back to the state uh, about 12 to 15 years ago with some men's and uh, first and second round matches, uh, this is kind of the culmination. This last award cycle, we were the number one market as far as number of bids won. We won three out of four years, so we were awarded three different uh, tournaments in out of the next four years. Well, that's impressive. Well, we're taping this Friday afternoon, so we don't know if the Ducks beat South Dakota State. They're playing 8.30 Friday night, fingers crossed, but the, the region... we got the beeves back east. <laughs> that's right, and they're in Albany. Yeah. Um, the regional finals are coming up on Sunday. It's so exciting. How are ticket sales going? Ticket sales have been exceptional. They've exceeded expectations uh, for the committee and for the NC2A. Since day one, Portland has led all markets in pre-sale, uh, even before the brackets were announced, we were already over 6,000 tickets sold for the event. Uh, we just broke the 11,000 number. So uh, if the Ducks can play through to Sunday, um, we could have a record setting regional. So and it already is the number one attended Western women's regional in history. And you had to open up more tickets for Friday night yeah, on the 300 level. The 102 level, 200 level sold out. So we're raising the curtain and going upstairs. So that, that it right there is a, a just scream success for this event. What impact does this have on the community economically and exposure for Oregon? Well, you know, beyond the quality of life aspect of bringing great events to the city and to the state, uh, the economic impact is significant. You know, working with our partners at Travel Portland, uh, you know, this is a big deal to the local hospitality industry, local businesses. Uh, I was over at the arena earlier and talking to some of the administration and travel parties and so forth, and they've already been here for a couple days as have fans and they're shopping and going to the Nike town and the Adidas store and Columbia store and up and down Broadway and throughout downtown. And they're already bragging about who was at a better restaurant the <laughs> night before. And if you tried, you know, Toro Bravo or so you know, many whatever, yeah, so there, but that's what it's all about is, you know, exposing our community. People from around the country hear about our community all the time in our state and like if they're connected with these schools, it gave them a reason to come here and they're kind of putting shoulders on their trip, either at the front end or the back end. Uh, I was talking to some folks that they went over to Bend before uh, they came to Portland for the games. And so th that's, th that's the, the trickle down effect that you know affects businesses uh, throughout the state and especially the hospitality industry. You already have the women's regionals again next year, the men's first and second rounds in 2022, and you'd like to get the women's final four eventually. What's it going to take to get that? Well, we've taken a great step uh, with, with what, what, what the, how the city's showcasing itself and, and hosting with the attendance. Uh, so we'll go into this next bid cycle with our partners. And uh, yes, we do want to figure out how to get a final four, women's final four here. And But also, you know, we'd love to draw a men's regional final. We won't get a men's final four because we don't have the big dome stadium, but uh, you know, our men's regional final, uh, that would be a great next step for us after the first and second round hostings that we've had. All those hostings have been near the top of the attendance charts compared to everybody else around the country uh, at, at, in those years that we hosted. Uh, I see a lot of success for us next year. I don't see the ducks or beavers sliding. They should be as strong as they are. So that builds a lot of local excitement. But then when we have these successes stacked up uh, and we go to the NC2A, you know, it, it helps our story. Uh, we may not get a final four the first time we bid this next cycle, because it will be the first time we ever bid for a final four in all likelihood. But it, if we don't, it cues us up for the next uh, four year cycle after that. So we're excited. We also want to bring other NC2A 
championships. The state has a great success with NCAA uh, championship events, whether it's the track and field championships in Eugene that are historically there, uh, other you know uh, rounds of competitions in other sports, whether it's been baseball, super regionals, or soccer, uh, playoff games uh, in women's soccer and so forth. Those things have all added up to Portland being a desirable market. So we'd love to look at volleyball final four maybe even, maybe a frozen four in hockey, even though we don't have any college hockey teams here. Hockey's a popular sport here, so it'd be fun. So everything's on the table. We got to see what we can win. We'll talk about on the table. Something that I've heard about for the 19 years that I've lived here is trying to get the NBA All-Star Game here. We're one of only a handful of markets that has never hosted an All-Star Game. What's holding us back? Well, uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, you know, I've been in the job a year, and that's the number one question that I get is, when can we win the All-Star Game? And maybe we should ask Chris, who was just in here, <laughs> Chris McGowan. But no, we work closely with the Blazers. They're one of our key partners. And you know, they, they really are, are, have been working hard over the last couple bid cycles to get Portland position. What had been holding us back forever was hotel rooms. Now we've got the convention, we got the center, convention hotel center hotel. Opening. But not just that, we've got uh, a higher number of uh, three and four star properties, especially four star properties coming online in the marketplace. We still kind of would be nice to have a five star property for you know the owners and some of the all stars and so forth. But the convention center hotel is changing the story. Um, and over the next three years, I think we have another 30 to 40 percent increase of rooms being built in the city. So. Um, our story gets better. Uh, the one thing you don't control is the strategy, future strategy of the league. You know, there's been talk that they may focus in on rotating amongst four key markets with the All-Star Game in the future, and that might leave mm -hmm. us on the sideline, but uh, we'll keep giving it our best shot. And the Blazers have been tremendous partners. I mean, when you see the bid documents and proposals that are presented, they're, they're mind-blowing. They're incredible brand presentations for Portland and, and uh, I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding why the NBA said oh, it no. It seems like everybody <laughs> wanted to come here and you said it would be a generational opportunity yeah. so we'll keep our fingers crossed. We only have a, a couple of minutes left but I want to ask you for people who don't know what is the Oregon Sports Authority all about? Yeah we've been around 25 years we're a nonprofit corporation and also a nonprofit uh, 501c3 foundation which we do a lot of our community impact work which is getting uh, youth communities underserved communities especially active in sports and keeping them active uh, but but our mission as an organization is to drive economic and quality of life benefit for communities in Oregon through sports. So whether it's leading bid efforts, uh, going arm in arm uh, with partners uh, after events or uh, pushing from behind and supporting other people's efforts, uh, a lot of it's around sports tourism, franchise recruitment, um, etc. And there's the big shiny objects like NBA or MLS All-Star or World Track and Field Championships, but then there's a lot of things that the people don't know to hear last winter the U.S. synchronized figure skating championships or the gay softball world series two years ago where 5,000 athletes and You're involved came. in all those things. All those things so yeah. And you're doing some rebranding soon. We are. We are. Uh, the word authority isn't real approachable and it also connotates that we're a government funded organization. We get some support from Travel Portland, Travel Oregon but we're really supported by 180 uh, corporations and individuals that are like-minded or with our mission and uh, you know all the major sports brands as you can imagine and the professional franchises and the universities are all behind us but pretty much about every sector of the business community supports us in one way or another uh, because it they, they live and work here, so they're about you know what sports does for our community from a quality of life standpoint. So, uh, yeah, we are going to rebrand this uh, in the middle of the summer. We're going to have a fun brand launch that'll last throughout the year, both uh, rebranding our organization but also the foundation. So we're a little over a minute it. left, but I have to ask yeah. you about baseball. Yeah. Uh, we had opening games this week yeah. uh, on Thursday. We have some video of the Mariners playing right. playing the Red Sox. What do you think? Are we going to have an opening a day here in Portland sometime soon? And do you think that the market can support a third major league team. I think uh, it can. You know, let's talk about Portland of today and tomorrow and not the Portland of yesterday. We change dramatically this marketplace almost every five years. It's almost tough to recognize what how things change. I mean, the skyline, etc. And you grew up here. Yeah, You've I grew seen up a lot here, of so I've seen it all. It's been the Blazer games when they launched and Timbers in 1975, all that. But 
Baseball will be a tremendous opportunity. Craig Cheek and Mike Barrett have done a great job of positioning with the whole Portland Diamond Project team. They've done all the right moves. They position Portland to be the leading the country as a destination opportunity for baseball, whether it's through a team moving here or expansion. And they're doing everything they can control, but they don't control everything. Uh, you know, they can't dictate when expansion happens. Only baseball can do that. And, you know, same thing if a relocation. But they have positioned themselves to pounce on an opportunity if it's there and uh, so it's exciting it would be a game changer <laughs> just a few seconds left but you see the Oregon Sports Authority whatever the new name you come up is really mm -hmm. playing a role in Portland's growth yes absolutely we're definitely raising the profile of our organization we've got a great history uh, and been involved in a ton of great things but we're definitely uh, raising our level of activity in the marketplace and uh, and influence Jim Metzl, thank you for joining us from the Oregon Sports Authority, soon to be renamed something else. We'll have you yeah. back on the show then. Perfect. I also want to thank Chris McGowan from the Trailblazers for joining us in our first segment. We'll see you next week for Straight Talk.